Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. I hope your 2022 is a lot better than your 2021 or even your 2020. I know a lot of people have had a rough year or a rough couple of years, myself included. So hopefully 2022 is going to be fun, exciting. Everybody stays healthy and has a good time. With that being said, though, because it is the beginning of the year, it's that time again to do another what's in my camera bag video. This year, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm actually going to do, do two separate videos because my camera gear has actually expanded so much that I now have a video setup and a photo setup. If you remember my video from 2021, if you haven't seen it, check it out right here. I talked about not really wanting to expand my photo gear too much, and I actually haven't too much. I've just kind of tweaked and modified, but I have expanded the video side quite a bit. So again, two separate videos. They're gonna come at you in part one and part two. Today, we're gonna start with the photo side. Let's jump in. So if you're a first time viewer, thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, I definitely appreciate your continued support. And speaking of support, go ahead and hit that like button for me and hit that subscribe button for me. It really does help out my channel quite a bit. And by liking videos, you guys tell me which videos you wanna see more of. So it's a win-win for both of us. All right, so for my photo gear, I kept it pretty similar to last year. Not a whole lot has changed. Uh, a lot of it has been kind of modified though. Just kind of slight tweaking and modifying of little things like cables and accessories to really give me the best bang for my buck when it comes to space in my camera bag. Speaking of camera bags, I'm shooting with two separate bags currently, depending on if I'm traveling or if I'm kind of staying local and doing a short trip. I have my Peter McKinnon uh, Nomadic bag, 35 liters, very large bag. And then I've also got my Manfrotto uh, Pro Light backpack, which is a much smaller bag for everyday trips. I do have a review for both bags. Uh, click here for the Peter McKinnon one if you do want to check out that review. And then if you want to check out the Manfrotto review, there's a video here as well. So a couple of options for you there. All right, so speaking of bags, let me grab both bags and I'll show you what they look like. All right, so here are the two camera bags. This is the Peter McKinnon uh, Nomadic and this is the Manfrotto Pro Light. Like I said, one is for travel, one is for everyday use. Let's dive into the actual gear that goes inside these bags. So on the photo side of things, not a whole lot has changed. Like I said, I'm still using my Sony a7R 4 which has been fantastic. I do have a review of that camera. If you do want to check it out, you can click right here for that. Um, but the gear itself is pretty similar, like I said, just a couple of small tweaks. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead view and I'll show you all the different items that are currently in that bag. So the main piece of equipment for my photography side of things is going to be my Sony a7R 4 This camera is fantastic. I've had nothing but a good time with it. If you want to see my opinion on the camera, uh, here's a link to the video. It shows off my uh, one-year review on it. I've got it currently attached to a Sony f2.8 f, uh, 24-70 G Master lens. That is pretty much my workhorse lens. It gets used about 90% of the time. So this camera with this lens is kind of the go-to for, I'd say about 90% of my photo work. So definitely a great setup that can do just about everything I need it to do. Now to add to the trinity of lenses, instead of going the traditional route of going uh, 16 to 35, I actually went with a um, Sony 2.8 12 to 24 G Master lens. I think the 12 to 24 is a better use of my space and money when it comes to a trinity because uh, I feel like a 16 to 35 overlaps a 24 to 70 so much where this way I have total 24 with no overlap and I've get that extra wide for the times that I need it. I've also got some custom lens caps on all my lenses um, in case you guys noticed that. This has also been a fantastic lens. Um, I've got a review for it up here. If you guys click in the corner, you can watch that video. It's just done a great job when it comes to landscape, when it comes to video, when it comes to just about everything. It's a fantastic lens. Completing my Trinity is going to be the uh, original version of the Sony uh, 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 G Master OSS lens. I do have a video for that as well if you want to check it out it's up here in the top corner um, this is going to be the longest lens that i currently have hopefully that'll change for my 2023 video um, but for 2022 pretty much my lenses have stayed the same as last year and, and quite frankly with the exception of wanting a longer lens maybe like a two to six hundred and a macro lens i have really not had a need for any other lens outside of what i have also in my camera bag i've got the peter mckinnon uh, polar pro variable nd filters both in the signature 2 edition and the mist 2 edition uh, both stops as well the two to five and the six to nine uh, i have them all in one size and then i have step up rings for all my lenses that way i didn't have to buy you know different packs of nd filters because they are quite expensive uh, so far they've been great i've had no complaints really done a great job and i especially love that they come in these defender 360 cases where um, they're always protected and they're very solid so definitely great work there to polar pro the next item in my kit is a sony f45 flash um, i honestly don't use flashes too much so this is actually the only flash that i own i do use it here and there but when i do use it uh, it does a Really good job. I've had no complaints with it. It syncs up to my camera really well, which is expected because they're both Sony products. But the overall has done a great job. I just don't think I use it as much as one might. But again, for when I've needed it, it's been fantastic. So I've got two separate um, Peter McKinnon Nomadic battery holders. One for my photo kit, one for my video kit. So basically I have 
three spare batteries inside each kit plus the battery that's in the camera. So a total of eight batteries, four for photo, four for video. And you'll notice that my batteries have little uh, fifth north arrows on them. If it's on the red side, it tells me that it is dead. If there's no sticker, it tells me that it's still charged. So a very easy way for me to keep track on which battery's charged, which battery's dead. That way I always know where I'm at with my battery situation. As far as tripods go, I don't technically have a tripod that goes into my camera bag. It technically hangs out on the outside. But regardless, I do have one tripod that I always take with me, regardless if I'm shooting photo or video. And that's gonna be the Peak Design Travel Tripod. This is the carbon fiber model. It is a very, very expensive tripod coming in at $600, but I do think it's worth every penny. It's very light, very strong, and you know I've really not had any issues with it. No matter what I've put it against, it's always done its job. And the fact that it folds up to be that thin, it actually fits into my water bottle compartment on both my bags, which most of my tripods can't. So I'm definitely happy about that size and weight. Um, Obviously, it'll take some time to invest into something like this, but when you can, it's definitely worth it because it's something you can keep for a very long time and have very good success with. All right, so the next item is obviously a must-have. It's going to be the original Sony charger that came with uh, both my cameras. Always have these on me because you never know when you're going to have to charge your battery on the go. I've got one in both my photo kit and my video kit, so always good to go when it comes to batteries. And speaking of always have items, also USB-C dock, mini dock if you will, uh, other world computing mini dock, um, micro, or not micro, I'm sorry, uh, regular SD card slot, USB-A, USB-A HDMI, a pass-through USB-C, and then obviously the plug-in USB-C cable here on the bottom. This is great for travel. If you need to charge anything, if you need to transfer data to a laptop, if you need to dock up to a TV, a monitor, whatever the case might be, makes this uh, a lot easier with having one of these around. All my memory cards are stored in a Peter McKinnon Nomadic memory card case. Right now there's not that many memory cards in it because they're all kind of scattered throughout the office, but normally that's where they go. Also micro SD in here, uh, primarily the cards that I use for my DJI drone. So micro SD and SD cards are my primary go-to. I haven't really gotten into the CF Express stuff yet. The type for the FX3, but this is kind of where it's at right now. Another Peter McKinnon Nomadic case. This one is going to be for my filters. So my uh, VND filters are outside of the case. As you guys saw, this is going to be my other filters right now. That's going to be my circular polarizer. I've got some microfiber cloths, and like I said, for my uh, variable ND filters and my polarizer, I have them all in one size, and then I have step-up rings for all the other lenses that I have. So that way I can just buy one set of filters and then a bunch of different rings to have everything work together. And then more filters on the end. I definitely have enough space in here for more filters, but I just don't see myself using that many filters. So it'll probably stay that empty for a while. All right, so another Peter McKinnon Nomadic accessory. This is gonna be the accessory box or accessory case. This is probably the biggest change from the last video that I made for 2021. Um, I've been kind of trying to fine tune and continue to modify this case to have as much portability, but as much connectivity as possible. So I've been kind of modifying what's in it constantly and I've gotten to a point where I think right now it's perfect. So in the top part of it, I've got a pen, I've got a little notebook, and then I've got my business cards all up in there, perfect, ready to use whenever I need it. And and the bottom part is all data transfer and charging. So right off the bat, I've got two of these pucks. They're fantastic. They are 65 watts, so plenty of power, and they can actually run three things at one time. So two USB-C and one USB-A. And like I said, I have two of them, so I can actually charge six things at one time. So no matter what I have with me, whether it's cameras, phones, uh, other battery backups, whatever the case might be, it can all charge from these two pucks. I also have an actual Apple one, just as an extra one for charging, you know, an iPad, an iPhone, whatever the case might be. Outside of the pucks, I have all the cables that I might need, um, all mixed throughout. We've got, you know, USB-C, USB-A, micro, uh, mini, lightning, thunderbolt, it's all in there. So no matter what I need to char charge or transfer, no matter what, I'm good to go. Even an Apple uh, watch charging cable as well. In the front part here, two very important items, two power banks, 10,000 milliamps, each, multiple ports on each. So again, I'm always good on power, whether it's plug-in power or portable power, I'm always good. And then below that, more cables, uh, lens cleaning accessory, and then probably my favorite cables of all time. They're super tiny, very flexible, rubbery, and uh, USB-C on both ends. And they're actually fast cables. They're actually charge fast and transfer data fast. They're perfect for putting uh, a device and a power bank in your pocket. You just fold it in half like this, charge them together, keeps it nice and small, or for transferring data, keep your you know hard drive close to your laptop. Perfect way to go. So like I said, this is a, a 
kit that I've been re refining over and over again. This is probably like the 15th version of it until I found the perfect balance of everything that I might need on the go to make sure that I can charge and transfer anything and everything. And again, when I'm traveling, whether it's photo, video, or both, one of these kits is always with me um, and I'm good to go. Next up in the kit, again, both for photo and video, we have a Samsung portable T7 SSD. This is a one terabyte model. I have two of these, one for each kit. Um, I always back up my footage when I go out, whether it's photo or video, I like to know that it's always backed up. I do shoot redundant, but if, I, if I'm out and about, I still to be extra safe. So I have three copies. I've got the original SD card, the backup SD card, and then everything saved on the SSD as well. I might even actually throw an extra copy on my laptop as well. Sometimes it's four copies, but you know, sometimes the stuff that you're shooting is never going to happen again. So just to be extra safe, I like to have multiples of everything. A totally non-tech item, but something that I think every photographer should have. And this is actually in my seven must have non-photography gear items. If you want to check that video out, click here. Um, it's going to be a little first aid kit. You never know what you might do when you're out there shooting. So a little first aid kit in the box. Good to have it. You know, band-aids, uh, butterfly band-aids, knuckle wraps, antiseptic wipes, safety pins, ointments, all that kind of stuff in here. Definitely saved me a couple of times. Another non-photo item, super important, flashlight. Just good to have. You never know when you need some light. I know we have flashlights on our phones, but it doesn't always work out well, so having a flashlight's a good idea as well. Also, my camera bag is going to be a rain cover. This one is from my Peter McKinnon bag. I also have one for my Manfrotto bag as well. You never know when you're going to need it, so I always have them with me. And speaking of rain, um, I also have these uh, Rugard rain covers for the camera. These are kind of like plastic bags, but a little bit tougher, and I've got two different sizes depending on the size of the lens that I have attached to my camera, but this will basically cover the camera body and the lens while still allowing you to shoot through the front of the lens. So definitely good to have in an epic downpour. I know the cameras are weather sealed, but sometimes the rain is so bad that it's just good to have one of these with you. Also nice to have are some tools. So in my kit, I always have my little tiny wrench. Uh, it's really tiny, but really good for random little things that get loose. And then with that, I've also got my small rigs, uh, multi-tool. I talked about this at great length in multiple videos. This thing is just awesome, especially for 20 bucks. Got a lot of different tools that no matter what happens, whatever is loose, whatever needs to be tightened, you can do it with one of these. Another must-have item for me, whether I'm doing video or, or photo, is going to be a uh, remote. I've got a third-party brand remote here, pretty cheap. It was like 20 bucks, maybe 15 bucks, but great for just doing a shutter release when you don't want to shake the camera. Or if you're doing video and you're too far away, it's easier to just hit start, stop, record, all from a little remote. So definitely a lifesaver in certain situations. So that's pretty much it when it comes to photo gear. Again, like I said, the next video is going to show my video gear. There are some pieces of the kits that kind of cross between the two paths. Um, obviously my camera bags, some of my lenses, battery packs, all that kind of stuff does go back and forth, but there is a clear line between what's photo and what's video. Um, with that being said though, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that like button for me. That way I know to make more videos like this. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. That way you know when my next video comes out. All right, so thank you for watching. Have a great night and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.